This video is sponsored by Pattern Maker Pro. Pattern Maker Pro has everything you need to make Marvelous Designer work for you. Hi everyone. I've gotten a few requests from viewers who want to make home decorating, sewing projects in MD. Home deck projects include pillows, bed linens, curtains, and other similar items used around the house. In the real sewing world, there are two somewhat distinct types of people. There are those that sew apparel and those that do home deck. I'm kind of odd because I've always done both. I also do upholstery work, which is another facet of home deck. When you go to a fabric store, this distinction is pretty clear. There's a home deck fabric section as well as the apparel section. Home deck fabric is typically more robust, but it's not intended for regular washing. Some of it can't even be washed at all. When you're creating home deck fabrics in MD, you want to keep this in mind. Formal curtains, drapes, and bedspreads are typically very dense fabric with a fair amount of mass. In this video, we're going to discuss this bed project that I made. There are a number of things that I should have done differently. I'll point those out to you as we go along so you won't make the same mistakes that I did. The final project file is available over on the Fearless Makers website if you want to play around with it. The bed is a canopy bed called a half tester. The canopy on these beds does not extend to the footboard supports. It only attaches at the headboard and extends only partway over the bed itself. I wanted to do this bed because it gave me the opportunity to show you curtains as a part of it. This bed is a queen size bed and I made this over in Blender. It's very low resolution and all I really added was a couple little bevels here. As usual, the bed wasn't my focus. I'm always all about the fabric. I created two mattresses for the bed and used references to make sure that they're the right height. You also notice that I cheated a little bit where the posts for the bed are separated from the mattress here in the front and the back. And I did that on purpose so that the bedding could fall down in between and wouldn't get caught up. But if this was realistic, of course it would have frames that ran the full length that connected everything together. The first thing I did was make this canopy cover and I just created rectangles for the top and the sides and the back. And you can see that I have some penetration here on the top. And that's because this bed has really sharp edges and MD does not like sharp edges. This was my first mistake. The mattress and canopy overhang are much too sharp and I should have rounded them before I brought them over here into MD. This front piece rectangle here on the canopy is about two times as wide as the canopy is to get lots of gathering. And then I created the center for the bedspread, which is actually just the dimensions of the top of the mattress. From here on out, the freeze feature became really critical. There's a lot of fabric in this project and MD will start to struggle very early on work on a single component at a time whenever you can and freeze the others. I had the particle distance on everything set to 40 and this helped a little bit with the simulations. For the bedspread, I made evenly spaced internal lines on the top and then I used the layer clone to make the underside. I set the pressure on the top to six and the underside to negative six. And this is mistake number two. I should have increased the pressure so the quilting was more pronounced. And at this point I got a little bit smarter about my penetration problems and I selected the bed and came over here in the property editor and set the skin offset to 10 which pushed all the fabric away and it really reduced the problems that I was having. Next, I created the side and end skirts for the bedspread. They're each about one and a half times as long as the corresponding edge on the bedspread. And I attached these one at a time, simulated, then froze, and moved on to the next one. 
Once I had all three in place, then I unfroze them and sewed this seam to sew them together, which is kind of hidden here behind these legs. At this point, I decided to go back to the canopy and create these side curtains. And this was mistake number three. The canopy patterns have little, if any, interaction with the bedspread itself. And I should have made the canopy separate and not combined it like this. It would have made things much easier on MD and it probably would have stopped some of the crashing that started happening later on. I deleted the temporary sides that I had on the canopy here and created these curtains. And they just run the full length from the top to the floor. They're about two times as wide as the top of the edge here. And I sewed each one, simulated it, froze it, and then sewed the other side. Once I was happy with the curtains, I created an internal line on them that runs diagonally. I applied the elastic setting to the internal line and it pulled the curtain back like it had something wrapped around it. Then I used the uh, pin to avatar feature to pin the edge of the curtain to the bed post so they would hold in the pulled back position. I was ready to begin work on the pillows at this point. And I started with a regular bed pillow that appears to be what you'd see in a pillow sham. I created a rectangle and then just used the layer clone on it to set pressure and puff it out. And you'll see that I did choose to round these corners over. They were really sharp and I didn't like the way that they looked. I created four strips of fabric to go around the edge to make the little ruffle. Then I went back to the curtains and created these tie backs and they're just simple rectangles and the ends of them are sewn together. It's sewn into a loop and then I use the pin to avatar on the tie back to pin it up to the bed post so that it would hold it in place. The goal here was to arrange the tie back so that it would cover that elastic and it would appear that the tie back was what was actually holding the curtain back. Now if you do something like this, you maybe want to keep that internal line pulling it at least until you get to your final work because sometimes MD will let things go when they're tied, pulled tight like this it could start letting this curtain go out to the other side of the tie back. So you do what you can to cheat to hold it into place until you get to your final work. I got my first pillow arranged, which is not easy by the way. You'd think it's really simple, but it's not. It wants to fall down and kind of float around and it was quite interesting. You'll see in the process that I actually flipped it upside down and unfortunately, using the layer clone creates fabric that's facing out on the back. So my normals are flipped, but I just left them there. To create the second pillow, I just copied the first one and then arranged it over here. And I also used the um, pin to avatar feature on these pillows and pinned them to the headboard so they wouldn't slide down. The next pillows that I made were these bolsters. And bolsters are cylinder shaped pillows and they consist of two circles with a rectangle in the middle and they're really simple to make. These pillows don't have any pressure applied to them because there's no way to really do it. They make some really strange looking shapes if you try to use the pressure setting. So instead, I just created a fabric that is actually the leather belt preset and applied it and it's stiff enough that it held them together really well, even with a little bit of a dip, which is nice because that would indicate that it was a little bit softer. And then of course, after the first one was done, I just simply copied it for the second. And to top off my pillow collection, I decided to make two more little pillows. 
and one is just a round pillow and it has two internal circles that are sewn to each other to give it a little bit of shape and this does have pressure set on it I've, uh, I've got 40 and negative 40 and the other one is just a little heart shaped pillow that I did both of them have long strips of gathered fabric around the edges And now that I had all the pillows and the bed done, it was time to start making the final arrangements and doing some detailing. At this point, MD was really struggling. I could freeze everything except what I was working on. And I got all the pillows arranged the way that I wanted them here. And this is the final project in MD. And I just worked my way around. I would select one thing. I would freeze everything else, lower the particle distance on the one I was working on, and then simulate. I really wanted to get all these fine gathering details over here in MD. You can see that I've got some little pointy weirdness going on up here on the canopy but by the time I got to this point MD was working really hard it was starting to crash on me and I knew that I could fix that in blender easily so I just left it and again I've got two pillows here well three actually this one and the bolsters also have flipped normals you can tell just looking at them but I decided that I could fix those in Blender as well. Normally when I output anything from MD to Blender, I convert it to quads. And I did try it <laughs> over here. Uh, no, not happening. Way too much, too much detail, too much fabric. MD was just crashing. So I decided that I would just leave it in tries. And I exported it as an OBJ to take over to Blender. I used a velvet material in Blender for the curtains and the bedspread. You'll notice that I didn't use any fabric with designs on it. I chose to use displacement maps instead to create a more rich embossed texture. These types of fabrics would be very expensive and that's the look I was going for. You can see my quilting on the bedspread was a complete fail. It was far too subtle, and by the time I realized it, it was too late to fix it. I should have left off the quilting or made it more pronounced with higher pressure. So that's Home Deck in Marvelous Designer. It's really very easy as far as the patterns are concerned. There are just a lot of rectangles, and the sizes will always be dependent on your based objects, like a bed or a chair or a window. Your biggest challenge will be the massive amount of fabric that's involved. Break the projects apart if you can to minimize these problems. As I said earlier, you can get this final project on the Fearless Makers website. Have fun with it and thanks for watching.